In this video, I'm gonna share with you how I went from charging $100 for a website to $10,000 for a website. This whole journey started a few years ago when I was working in Minneapolis at the Postal Service. I was a clerk, I scanned packages for eight to 12 hours a night and it was really boring. Um, and one night I got to fantasizing about owning my own freelance operation. So I moved out of Minneapolis, I started my own very small freelance business, um, doing mostly video, photo, SEO, some website stuff. Um, but not much because I really didn't know that much about web development. So I was building sites just like clicking on WordPress sites and building themes that way or selecting pre-built themes. Um, my first couple sites I built for, my very first site was for a nonprofit that I built for about $100 and a coffee card at a local diner. Um, it was for a nonprofit that I really... Uh, felt could benefit from a website. So I helped them out and they paid me about a hundred bucks My f other clients after that were in the couple hundred dollar range fast forward a few years And now I'm charging anywhere between five and ten thousand dollars for a site sometimes more Basically if it requires an internet connection and there's a graphical user interface I'm doing the job. I want to talk a little bit about that progression and how I'm able to do that so the reason I wasn't able to charge a lot in the beginning is because I was new I was just trying to build a portfolio. I really didn't know how the real world stuff worked. Um, I had done the projects on Udemy. I had done like some GitHub projects, but nothing too serious and nothing too real world. And jumping into freelancing was when I was able to really see it, um, the web development process. I also have enterprise development experience. So that really helped um, seeing how this stuff works on a higher, uh, more expensive level because there is a big difference between an e-commerce site using WooCommerce and an existing e-commerce site that's trying to talk to a server with code that's 30 years old. Um, so many different situations where it gets ugly very quickly, where it gets so many situations where it gets really complicated and really dirty really quickly. Um, and I've learned over the years with freelancing and with enterprise how to problem solve. I don't, my, I might not necessarily know how to solve it right away, but I know where to go to get the answers. Now the value of my projects for these clients is not necessarily the site or the integration. My hair is wild. Um, it's my process. My process is worth money and my results for that client are worth money. So some people may be thinking, okay, $5,000, $10,000, that's a lot of money. And it is, but it's also all relative. Uh, because if that client's able to make or gross a million dollars after three years from a $10,000 website, that's a really good deal. That's a really good investment. And there really is no limit on how much you can charge if you can bring the results, if you can deliver results, and if you know the value of your process. Because anybody can make a website, anybody can try and do an integration, anybody can try and tweak a code base. Um, but the process, your step-by-step -step process is really what's valuable and the results you can give your client. If you're just building a site with no results, that's not worth anything. You have to have a good idea of what the result is gonna be um, and try and gauge that as best as possible with Google Analytics, uh, with your own observations. There's many different ways to do it, um, but you do need to know, you have to have a good idea of what the results are gonna be. The other reason I can charge more is because now I have a portfolio and the more people I work with, the more people I can feature in this portfolio and get that social proof. Word of mouth is still very important. Yes, the YouTube algorithms and all these algorithms are powerful, but what's even more powerful is word of mouth and people telling another person, I trust RTC to build this project or fix this code or do this or do that or get more traffic to my website or build me a niche site or whatever their needs are. They can now trust me well, they have the perception that they can trust me, hopefully they will, uh, with that social proof and with that feedback that others have given. There are so many ways to make money in freelance web development, it's ridiculous. Um, and charging five figures, even six figures, guys, I've worked on projects, I've worked on million dollar projects. It sounds like a lot, a million dollars is a lot of money, 
but it's all relative to that company's income, to your client's income, based on how that app is helping them make that income. Okay, that was really convoluted. But what I'm saying is, if you can make a company money, you can make money, and the more you make a company money, the more you can make. We all have to start somewhere, and it's okay to do websites for 50 bucks. It's okay to do websites for free. It's okay to do websites for a few hundred dollars. Um, but just know that eventually there is an upgrade available to you but you have to know your process. You have to be able to articulate that process. You have to show results and you have to get people to trust you. You might be able to get one or two clients to cough up 10 grand, but if you do a bad job or if you're bad with customer service, it's gonna show and you're not gonna get those calls. Being a commodity, being that hot commodity, com hot, hot commodity, being that hot commodity, it's totally doable for anyone interested in web development and doing freelancing. I have a book, Freelance Newbie, shows you most of my secrets, all my good ones, my really, really good ones I'm keeping for another book. Um, but if you're just trying to get started with freelancing, check out Freelance Newbie. It's also a top rated Udemy course. Freelancing is just, it's awesome because it's part of my business and you get to call the shots. Clients tell you what they want, but I decide how I do things. I decide when I do things and ultimately I'm responsible and I really like that feeling. In fact, because of my freelancing, because I'm self-employed, I get to take some awesome R&R in the middle of nowhere. It feels really good and I uh, work a lot <sighs> and I'm finally here relaxing and doing a YouTube video because I just love YouTube. No, seriously, like I, I can't, I don't know how to not do videos <laughs> even on vacay. Uh, yeah, so check out the book, check out the course um, if you want to get started with freelancing. Freelancing is also a great way to build a portfolio if you're trying to do the 9 to 5 because with freelancing, you're solving real world problems. It's not just Yelp Camp anymore. You're going to the real world. And let me tell you, it's a big difference between a Udemy project or any type of online project because you're building it from the ground up, from level zero. Like, things are perfect. Enjoy Udemy courses while they last, while you can enjoy them. Big difference between that and real world because, because the real world is super messy and you're cleaning up things and you're dealing with personalities and the servers are breaking, computers are breaking, your code is breaking. You have to fix all these things. Um, it's just a whole different world. And the sooner you can, you can expose yourself to that world, the more money you're going to make. And I think the happier you're going to be because, you know, well, money doesn't buy happiness, but it certainly makes things easier. Anyways, I hope you can tune in for more of these. I don't know where I'll end up. Hopefully, um, somewhere cool. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See ya.